Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. And as you notice, we have a little bit of a different background. This is the office and I'm trying to, or I've decided to, to play with different rooms for different lighting so that we can see some of these yarns a little bit better. <laughs> That's the driveway alarm is going off and Hitch doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in the chapel, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. That's Proverbs 27 and 6. Um, so that goes with just the changeover of co-workers and just how my life is going right now. So, yeah, there's that. All right, totally hooked. Let me start now. Because I'm in a different area I kind of have things spread out. I'm at the desk. I have a laptop. Roommate has a computer. There's not a whole lot of room, but if the lighting in here works, I will work it out. Um, it is what it is. There's still boxes here um, that have to be stored away and all that, but it stores in the very back room and I haven't gotten back there to get some of my stuff that that's one of my closets and I need to get some stuff out of the way so that we can put those boxes so I kind of have boxes everywhere but it is what it is so totally hooked totally hooked um so I've been doing the Mary Maxim kit of the month and they sent me a baby blanket duo I only made this one this one is square and I talked about that last time that I don't like making square blankets because they're not exactly exactly usable and I like for a baby to be able to use a blanket for years to come you know at least two or three years um, so I made this stripey one um, you saw the blue one and it's not blocked yet but I did weave in the ends and stuff um, but here's my rogue row that I talked about which isn't bad, it lines up, blah, blah, blah. It is what it is. So that one's totally done. It was done last week, but I hadn't woven any of the ends. Then there's this one. And as you can see, there's my rogue row. Right there, just one row. But the ends are woven in and it's not blocked either. You can tell. Now the green stripey that I used it works up a little bit differently so it kind of looks like it goes like this but when I get it blocked it'll be fine um, it's the same stuff and it does pull out different it just it seems like it's almost just a little thinner and this is a little bit thicker so yeah but I mean that's okay because I put them there um, these two right here Bella is expecting a baby boy in May she's our intern and Ashley just had a little girl so I'm gonna give those two cousins and they're actually second cousins those two kind of matching blankets so this one right here totally done totally hooked I know how to do this pattern just don't like it because it's square and I like the long and I chose not to put the trim on there because I wanted to use the green to elongate it a little bit so that once again they can use it longer that those blankets are as long as my legs and they're as wide as my legs so they could be lap blankets they could be anything but a toddler is going to be able to use them up to the time they're four or five years old just depending you know so I just don't like to make things in them only be used a couple of times and then oh well she outgrew that kids grow too much give them a blanket that they can use as a toddler too and they're much happier you know with it and so are their parents just saying so I think that is the only thing I have totally hooked <clears throat> is those two blankets and they're done um now in the basket it's a different story because first off I still have this one my money bag here and it's got the blue and I have been working on it so yeah it's getting longer um, 
I wanted a certain length and I just I haven't taken the time to work on it I plan on getting this one gone this week then there's this one it shows no progress and it's a geo and I know what it is and why it's not laying the way I want it to lay and it's because they start in the center here instead of starting with a corner It'd be so much easier to start this pattern in the corner um, but it's not laying right it cat looks ca kind of cattywampus like it looks like it V's up here at the top and I don't like that you know it just this one looks straighter this one looks straighter it's not so bad the way they did it but then this and if I pull this down to where it actually ties on it looks like it V's so I'm not really happy about the way it's laying I've made progress um, but you know and this is that Plymouth yarn I showed the tag I don't know how long ago okay so wonderful yarn it's not the yarn it's just not laying right and I've made progress only to rip it out because I want what I want so there's that one ah! then and we're gonna get to that here in just a minute okay so then I brought this in it is I okay so let's back up a minute okay so I got my Tunisian hooks in I just got them in the other day and I do like the bamboo they're smooth if I do get a nick I just take sandpaper and go over them and they're honestly if this catches at all I just take sandpaper and do it and I love these um, they're just made with this shrink hose they're pretty inexpensive okay and the beads on the end uh, so I'm good with that but I got these in Friday okay and it was actually late Friday when I checked the mail so I got those in and I plan on using them with this now I only brought this yarn in here to sh see if I could show you the color because we're playing with the color you've seen it before I just want to see if you guys can see better color okay and so I'm dropping it it's it's a pound that I've made into I think 1100 yards and I have another pound but mm, maybe let's try this okay so yeah there's greens there's gray and this actually is showing you better color than when it was out in the um, dining room so it's actually showing pretty close so I kind of like the lighting in here so we might just have to do it in here I although I don't know it looks pixelated right now so I'm gonna stop and see if I have to start over there it went no okay I don't know why I did that so we'll see how this turns out <laughs> yeah I don't know it's giving me a little oh it wants to update I don't want you to update I'm busy so quit taking away from that okay anyway fighting with computer as you can tell the other thing is is that I just couldn't wait so we got this kit and it's the one this is my uh, crochet of the month and it's the one that we're giving away um, I'm gonna do the giveaway for another week so you have one more week to enter but you have to enter on last week's um, video I'm only taking entries on that video if you notice I'm not taking entries in the thread in Facebook or anything in order to enter you have to deal with that video only okay so my life is too complicated to have 50 different ways to enter so you have to enter on the thread that says giveaway and you have to watch podcast to figure out how to enter so um, okay so back to this I did start mine okay and if you remember I have a little bit different it comes with the same green but then the blue purpley bright colored one I got this one and it's got grays and olives and browns 
Um, so, yeah, it's working up quite nicely. <laughs> yeah, I say that, but there is an issue. I'm giggling because here in a minute we're going to get into it. Okay, so here's this. I, ha I haven't woven any of my ends, you know. Every stripe is got an end that goes with it. Hey, yet. So, and I just dropped my crochet hook. Hold on. Okay, so. This yarn. The olive and tans. Hitch, what you doing? Hey, Hitch. What are you doing? Are you itchy? Did you come in here just to itch? Hitch. Are you coming in here? <laughs> hey, you all right? What are you doing? You got itch? Okay. He'll normally come. He's going right under the desk, under my feet, and that's where he's probably going to lay. All right, get under there. I'm trying to lay on the chair. You can get under there. Here, hitch. In here. All right, get under there. Quit. Okay, he's decided he did. Ow! And he just hit my <laughs> hitch. I gotta find my little chair thing now because somebody just lowered my chair. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, he's just doing better. He's getting nervous the weather is changing we'll get into hitch and his issues here in a little bit because he's doing better and i'll let you know so back to this yarn thing i'm just gonna put it out there i don't like the word hate so i'm gonna say i severely dislike this yarn okay world of nature no no row okay um, I have sinus pressure and I still have not been able to read this tag. It's too tiny, but I do know that it's cotton. It, it's 77% cotton and 23% something else that I can't make out. They have four or five different languages on the back of this thing. So I hate this and I'll tell you why. Okay, so this is Nero. It is never, I'm never going to buy it. Why am I having trouble? focus in all of a sudden I am never going to purchase this yarn ever so it comes in a hank when you get your kit and the first thing that you have to do you you can do your first like five or six rows I can't remember maybe seven rows anyway you do your gr first green part which is great super soft acrylic I'm in love with this I've got a girlfriend who is just rediscovering acrylic because it's so soft this is uh mary maxim best value and it's super soft love it you can do those first five rows then you have to ball wind this to crochet with it well hence my first problem and i literally have a knot tied in the in this so that it will quit fraying past the knot but it has more problems than that Okay, so I'm going to use this right here as an example. This right here is supposed to be a single ply. It's not spun. There's no twist to it. So when you are ball winding it, it literally will come apart. All right. Now, I've had people who will say, well, you're just putting too much tension on it. <laughs> I've ball wound millions and millions of balls okay my granny hated ball winding so she'd have me and my son do it all the time okay from the time I'd come and visit her I can remember doing it back it's probably fourth grade I'm over 50 so it's not me I do know how to ball wind okay I don't put too much tension on there I have it on my skeiner I I know what I'm doing okay so please don't say you're pulling too tight you're this you're that I'm not I've done this a million times literally I've done it with hand spun I've done it with single plies that I've hand spun I've done it with um, well thread weight 
single ply so I can get it to a fingering weight double ply. You know, I, I've done it with art bats. I've done it with pencil rubbing. I've done it with everything you can imagine. And this should not be pulling apart. Even single should be stronger than that because when you're crocheting with it and say you've got your, you know how you wrap it around your finger to crochet and I can't do it without, there you go, like this, it will pull apart with just your moving your fingers to feed the yarn through. And it's not just in one part, this is a one ply and it does not have enough twist in it in certain spots to make it anything other than more like a roving and yeah it and it, it's they're bigger fluffier parts like right here that has absolutely no twist and this is cotton so cotton has to have some twist okay cotton is a slick fiber and slick fibers take a little bit more twist than grippy ones so this should have some and to have a slick fiber with no twist and to put it out in a commercial line i've done it accidentally when i'm spinning myself but yeah i haven't done it in years so it's not something that i will ever be buying if you like that look you're gonna have to be really careful with it um like i said even to ball wind because I can show you spots and when I show you you'll understand um, if you're a spinner let me rephrase it if you're a spinner you will understand what I'm getting ready to show you so this hasn't even been this is how it comes in the kit I haven't done anything to it I want you to look at that yellow right there yeah no twist at all look at this orange right there mm -mm no twist there's big spots that have absolutely no twist in it at all and like I said it's cotton it's a slick fiber and it should have some twist in it or it's gonna pull apart because that's pretty much just laying cotton there lining up the fibers but there's no twist so it's gonna pull apart when you go to do anything with it I guess I, I just can't believe somebody would sell this. I would not sell this product. Okay, that's just me. I would not sell this product because it leaves too many spots. I have spots in that that are tied together. When I was ball winding it, it happened twice. When I'm crocheting with it, it happened so far another time. So that's three. And I haven't even used all of it. So it happened three times. Um... I did tie a knot in the other end so that it would stop the other end that's getting, you know, because it's the end that's exposed while I go, while I pack it around and work on it and stuff. Um, but yeah, a standard skein of yarn is allowed to have, by industry standards, three knots in it. Now, whether it's in one ply or the other ply or, you know, because you can have a three ply yarn, um, but there's always those end runs. That they tie together and it's okay for them to do that up to I think three times and you still have a skein okay so this already has three in it and pretty much it's just falling apart um, it didn't come with it had one knot in it that they did and then this so I'm assuming maybe this is an end run or whatever but no it, it's I don't know it, it's not they had one knot in it when I was ball winding it, then it fell apart twice, and then it broke on me when I was crocheting. So I put three in it alone, and it had one little tie-in. That's not good. It's not good to have that many. It means it's a very weak yarn, and how is it going to stand up to wear and tear, crocheted up or, or knitted up with it if it can't withstand ball winding? Or it can't withstand my hand actually working with it um, I would hate to see somebody get that caught 
you know, that little chalet, say it gets caught, you know, the wind's blowing. This is Oklahoma. The wind's blowing. It gets caught just on a little thing and it pulls. I see it coming apart, that thing. So I'm not very proud of that yarn, but it's not my yarn. I will finish the project. I like the way the project looks. I don't like that yarn and I will never purchase this yarn right here. The Whoever gets the kit, we're going to extend that um, drawing out one more week. Like I said, you need to go and actually put the entry like you're supposed to for the giveaway. I'm not looking everywhere else for everybody's entries. It's either on that video or it's not. So if you're watching this and you haven't put it on the right video, please go back and put your entry on the right video. Because I'm not looking on Facebook and all that other stuff. I'm keeping it super simple. It's a YouTube thing and do what you got to do. Okay. But whoever wins this kit, I'm curious to see what they have to say about this show. Okay. Because maybe I'm just too rough. Maybe it's a me thing. Um, I'm always willing to give the benefit of the doubt. Um, but as for me, I would never be purchasing or will never be purchasing oops, this. Okay. Um, it was great to try it once, but nope. It just falls apart too easy. So, all right. The other thing I have, and this is kind of silly, but um, RJ brought me, uh, he has our truck. It's mine and his truck together. And he uses it because I have my little car. And he hauls the horses more than I do and stuff. So, But that means for hauling stuff, anytime he comes down, guess what? He gets to haul some of my stuff for me. So he brought in, I don't know, three or four big old boxes and stuff. And no more than I get everything a home in my room. And then he turns around and brings more. No, it has to be done. But it's so funny because now the room isn't clean again. <laughs> It's like it got unclean. It got, it, it's not dirty. It just, it's cluttered. And it got, and I had it all straightened out. Now it's unstraightened out. <laughs> so, and on top of that, I've been trying to, to work in my stuff like here on the desk. I've got my calendar, which I used to carry in my briefcase with me all the time. Well, now I don't need to carry it with me. So it's on the desk. And that way, and roommate's gone to putting stuff in it so that we, both know what's going on and it kind of serves its purpose but yeah now I've got to incorporate all the stuff I had from work back into here and it, we were laughing because I actually have three toothbrushes now because I had one when I was okay so I did Danny's house I did Krista's house and then I was at home well I didn't want to unpack everything and start packing again so I have my nice sonic you know toothbrush um and i use that here at the house well then i have a regular toothbrush that i had oh, sorry in my tote at danny's and then i have another regular toothbrush that i had in my tote at christa's so i now have three toothbrushes all here at this house <laughs> and i don't need but one and then um the other thing is is that we've <laughs> noticed that I have lots of, so I had, I think, five things of deodorant because I had an overnight bag that I always kept one in. Then I had Danny's, Krista's, and the house. And then the house was getting low, so I just bought another one. So I had like five things of deodorant. I'm, I'm downsizing. I'm getting there. I'm getting there because I only have this house. So putting them all in one place is making me use a lot of them. So I'm in the process of using up tubes of toothpaste and um, let's see, I just got off shift Thursday. So, um, and technically yesterday was my last day and I started my new job yesterday too. So, okay. Anyway, we're getting off, off. So yeah, my room is a mess again. Um, okay. So that's totally hooked. Okay. Back to my point. RJ brings me stuff. Okay. So lost in, I don't know why I didn't get back to it or whatever, 
I found he found a project that I had been working on and it's not it's in the basket because I am going to go back and finish it and it is this little guy so if you followed us for a while I may have mentioned this earlier it's a hook latch thing um I have it oh I have to sneeze <coughs> oh sorry um I have it over halfway done Oop, it's upside down and it's probably three or four rows past the halfway mark but yeah looks good it just got stored away it got pushed aside it didn't get stored away it got pushed aside and there for a while I didn't work on anything so um, yeah it's one of those deals where I'm gonna go back to working on it and you might see some progress on it from time to time so yeah but that's what happens when he brings me stuff I find other stuff so <laughs> anyway all right I don't have anything on the wheel right now because I have been working with this I've started to do another job switch that um, I don't have anything dyed up because I haven't had anything on the wheel so in the fields I went back out and for those of you who follow us on Facebook you saw that my um, greenhouse got cratered in 40 to 45 mile an hour winds yeah welcome to spring in Oklahoma so I now have um, tied it to the fence because it was staked down and the wind literally ripped the the plastic from around the grommets <coughs> I mean the holes are still there the grommets are still there but it's not all connected and it doesn't stake down very good so I tied it to the um, fence and it is doing much better <laughs> just saying so I went out and I redid my tomatoes and my peppers um, uh, the sage made it a few of the little watermelon plants still made it um, but I recreated my herbs um, my basil my oregano um, I can't remember what all but I got little trays from Walmart they donate them so you can if you are in a Walmart greenhouse you know they've got that outside part if you go up and ask any of the workers they'll tell you you can take as many as you want they normally have them on a cart there they recycle them and so they're like oh yeah if you need some take some so I got some to replace the ones that got busted when the whole greenhouse flipped over so yeah I got those going and that's really all I have is in the fields because my microgreens are coming up on top of the thing but my plants which should be getting close to transplant time have now been cratered by the wind and it's supposed to snow today we'll see what makes it it's just one of those weird weird times I don't know all right so Let's move on to in RJ's world and in the farmhouse because they kind of are going together. Um, like I said, he's been bringing down some stuff for me and he brought in the cattle. So, yeah. All right. Let's back it up. So, first, um, RJ's been rodeoing. Okay. So, we'll address RJ's world first and then we'll go on into in the farmhouse. He's been rodeoing um, and he has been practicing he had a bigger calf that like Gordy um, has a messed up leg so he's not able to he can get around but it happens um, they'll break a leg when they're young and then it'll go unnoticed they'll like limp but then as it starts to grow and they get bigger it becomes more pronounced or whatever and people are like oh what do I do with it now well we grow it up and we call him cripple crip you know um and we're gonna grow it up and put him in the freezer every animal has a job i'm not gonna sugarcoat it you know sometimes the job is to be food um so he can't breed because he can't stand on that leg he can't you know he can't procreate so you know every life needs a purpose 
and so his purpose will be to feed RJ and I, um, and other people, just saying. It, 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 to RJ and I, his job is to feed us, so we're going to feed him right, we're going to take the best of care for him, and make sure that he's fine, and then, you know, it is what it is. Um, his job will be to provide nutrition for us, so, um, yeah. He came down with four buddies, Fred, Doris, BB, and Fuzzy. I'm sorry, I have to count it off. Um, Fred and Doris are females, first off. RJ named them, so you just, Fuzzy's a little waspy. Um, RJ said he, he came from another pasture and was just kind of out there on his own from somebody else, and he's just kind of waspy, but he looks pretty He's got the long dead hairs and he's wormy or was wormy. RJ worked them, branded them, um, wormed them, all that kind of stuff before he brought them in. So he, I think he did it like on a Thursday and then they came Saturday morning. So they shed their worms, they shed their stuff and here it should be good clean grass. Um, so Fred and Doris are two that ended up staying at his girlfriend's house because the truck broke down he couldn't run go get them so she went and picked them up for him and then he came to her house and she'd already like played with them so they made terrible roping calves they were babies they were little so Doris and Fred are two curious little things I mean they come up and they curious everything so they've nosed in everything Fuzzy's a little waspy crip he's bigger than them and he, of course, has that leg, so he looks like he's limping. And then BB is, stands for blind bull, and he is pretty much blind. You know, when they get pink eye and they're that young, and some people in our area don't check every pasture every day, and even if they do, they just do a head count and go on. If a cow is, if a calf stays with a cow, they just assume the best and oh he looks fine so but he doesn't see very well so he buddies up with Fred and Doris and just because they come first to the feed let me just tell you <laughs> so anyway he buddies up with them and he can he follows Crip around a little bit and, but the five of them stay together there is I think seven usable acres here pond you know, and there's plenty of grass, plenty of grass. Um, we were laughing because we've noticed that they stay to the outside. We don't really see them graze the inside yet. Don't have a clue why they just do. They're always along the fence line. Um, but we do have them. RJ did bunk, bunk break them before they came here so that we could feed them and make them. I, I want them handleable because we don't have shoots and all that stuff. When we go to load them out, we don't have the channel that you know, RJ and I have made with cattle pens and, or cattle panels and all that. We don't have a chute to run them down. So, yeah. Hey, Itch. Are you itchy? What's the matter, huh? So, all right. Let's see. What else is going on? We'll just talk about Hitch because he came in. Um, Hitch is doing better. Um, he does hear the driveway alarm. Thinks he's going to rough it up and he's you know and then if somebody actually comes to the door he hides behind you just saying it, it happens I have no idea why it is what it is but he's all <laughs> um he's gotten better I put him outside to run the vacuum and he does just fine um I let him outside on his own for a little bit um he's scaredy cat and I mean serious scaredy cat if you flip a trash bag He's going to the other end of the house. Um, if you run a mixer, he is going to try and go through a window. Um, if you run the vacuum, he will eat through your Venetian blinds to try and get out of the house. Um, as you can tell, he's super calm when everything is super calm. But there are certain sounds that just send him over the edge and he anything that like has a motor hum to it 
he can't stand it. He, he just absolutely freaks him out. So, and it doesn't matter what pitch it is. If it's a humming motor, like when the heater clicks on, sometimes he'll stop and, oh, just the heater. Um, we have a fan that draws the air when we run the wood burning stove. It's, it's got a fan on it that draws that air out into the room. Well, yeah, it's got a blower on it. That's what I'm trying to say. And when you turn that blower on, he leaves and goes to the kitchen. He doesn't want anything to do with it, you know, and it's humming motors. I, I don't know why, I don't know what the deal is, but it is what it is. And, and so he's getting much better now. I did, he's never been left alone for any length of time until yesterday. So, <laughs> he's always gone to the farm where RJ is in and out and in and out when I'm gone for two days for work. Well, when I switched my job, I didn't want to run him 45 minutes that way to be there for 12 hours, turn around and run him 45 minutes. Cause I have to drive that 45 minutes and then drive 45 minutes back. So an hour and a half, you know, back and forth every morning and every night is a lot. So I decided that I would try it. Roommate was on board. Um, we haven't kenneled him with him being here in, in a while. Okay, I'm just going to say that. When he first started coming here, he was kenneled at night because he would just go crazy at every big semi that would go past the house. Um, now, he's not. He spends the night out of his kennel. Um, yesterday, I started this job. Now, he still went back to the farm when I was gone for 48 hours straight. Okay. But yesterday, he was left out. And I work from 6.30 in the morning to 6.30 at night. And with it being my first day, I was late getting home. But on lunch hour, I'm close enough that I can run down, let him out to go potty and all that. So I spent 30 minutes with him, you know, uh, yesterday. And then roommate gets home at 4 and roommate lets him out. So... He, the the longest stretch is in the morning from, you know, 6 o'clock when I leave. Because I have to be there at 6.30. So, I leave at 6. And until noon when I get home at like 12.15. So, 6.15, 7.15, 8.15, 9.15, 10.15, 15, 11.15, 12.15. So, 16 hours alone by himself. He, he didn't knock on wood. He didn't tear anything up. I did give him a bone and a chewy before I left because I wanted him to be occupied. He's got tons of toys down there. He's, you know, pretty good about keeping occupied, but sometimes, I don't know. <laughs> he goes crazy, eats through a Venetian blind or tries to go through a window or, yeah. It can get pretty haphazard. So, he's doing great because I can put him outside, run the vacuum, and he comes like nothing. But you have to put the vacuum away before he sees it. If he even sees the vacuum, he's like freaking out. So, I put him outside, run the vacuum. Yeah. Um, put him outside, run the mixer. <laughs> yeah. Bring him back in. You know, so, and he's actually doing really well. We've let him out in the yard by himself now. Um, so when we first got here with him, I had to walk him in the yard and he still freaked out. Um, he has gotten so good that the other day I accidentally left open the gate and he got out and roommate actually just walked up to Hitch and said, come on Hitch, let's go and walked in the yard and Hitch just followed right in and we closed it and I was like, oh my God. Um, so we were doing the yard and I forgot that we had that gate open to weed eat and I come walking out and Hitch was with me and I didn't think anything about it until I went to the back and of course he right out the gate but he came back so that's good the very first time that he escaped this house um yeah he took off down the highway so he's getting better He's kind of moseying around and just doing and and he's calming down. It just takes him a long time to get used to things and it takes him a long time to calm down. So, um, 
Now I let him in and out of the house with in within the yard only by himself. I just if he goes to that door, I go open it up, he goes out and I go do whatever. Um so yep. And he's laying right here behind me. If we go outside and we're grilling or whatever or sitting out um in the chairs out in the front yard, he's right there with us, just lays around, you know. But put him in the great big world he's getting used to this house okay um and if you put him in the great big world he freaks out so anything new anything anything he's going to check something out who knows um he does he is funny though because the driveway alarm when it goes off he's all whoo and he goes marching out there to the front door and he'll cock his head and look at it sometimes he even barks then if somebody comes to the door he runs around behind your legs <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I got this no I don't <laughs> he's undecided so he's doing good um like I said RJ brought in the cattle they're here um I'm kind of disgusted because last week you know it was rainy and stuff but it was 60 70 degrees now it is 30 some degrees and I go out and have to feed cattle it's a way of my life so all right i think that about covers everything i'm just babbling now but yeah enter last week's video contest and we will give that away by random drawing um i probably will do it hmm, i have to work monday so i'll probably do it sunday and then post it in the next video so i will see you guys later and i will thank you all for watching and have a good week